Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is project number seven of my Christmas Workshop 2017. So this is the last one of this fest series that I'm doing and this is my advent calendar. Now the photos you would have seen at the beginning would have shown the complete version. This base is my um, prototype but all of the boxes apart from one which I'll show you um, how to make and this one here will be made as well. Um, these are obviously the, the real ones. Um, and basically this idea has come from me growing up as a child. This is what we always had in our house. It was always an A4 size advent calendar with chocolates in it. Me and my sister, they'd be hanging in the kitchen or on the fridge and, and that was it, just one little sweet inside. So I have spent a long time putting this together, thinking how it would work best. And, um, and this is what I've come up with. And it's a really nice thick, you can see the sides there. Um, piece. The one that I'm going to um, make of this base is also got um, ribbon so you can hang it, I thought which was nice. Um, and yeah, in terms of decoration obviously you can do any colours and themes that you like but as I've said through all my videos, mine is red, green, golds, whites, things like that, that's the colours that I like. Um, and they're just little boxes that fit in snug into their little square there and then inside they hold two chocolate eclairs. One for me and one for my husband. And I thought this is something that can be used for, you know, a few years to come. Um, I'm sure after a while the boxes will probably uh, get a bit worn and um, etc. But for now, I think it's really good and I'm really pleased with this. This is a day-long project. Um, it is, a, a like I said, a meaty project, as I said at the beginning of the week. So, I've already done lots of stages. Um... It's actually straightforward. There's no um, hard bits to do in it. It's just lots of bits to do. So first of all, let me grab everything that I have here. So the box itself. So basically this is the piece that I've already done pre-cut and I'm going to talk you through all that. And that will sit and all these boxes will come through just as they do with the white um, box at the moment. Um, so I'll tell you about the sizes of that in a minute. And basically underneath that is that shadow box style like that, that I've done many projects, but it's just something now that I think I'm going to go to a lot because it just allows you to make really strong structures, boxes, things like that. So, right. Firstly, you are going to need, um, well, if you haven't got these, you'd have to do them by hand, but you'll need a square framelet and the smallest one out of my stitched um, nest of uh, dies is this one here and this measures at one and one sixteenth of an inch so you can see it's just after the one but not quite one and one eighth of an inch so it's one and one sixteenth of an inch so to follow exact as mine and with all the measurements I give you you will need that size square or you will cut draw that size square and cut it um, with a um, uh, 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 cutting knife <laughs> um, and your like your mat and stuff you'd have to do it that way so yeah that's what you will need to be able to get the the main really you need that size because everything I'm going to tell you in terms of all these little boxes will match that size but if you don't then and you've got another size square and you're confident to be able to work out the measurements for those little boxes then that's fine so you need them, then you need some ribbon, which is op optional if you want to have it hanging or not. And mine is 12, roughly 18 inches um, by the time I put knots in it and stuff. So a piece of ribbon. Um, then you need, because I had cut this white one out, I had all these white squares, which worked out perfectly for me to be able to stick on top of there. But otherwise, what you need to do with your same square you will need to cut out 24 little squares. Okay, so I've done that, I've done that, I've done the ribbon. I'm just putting it up so I make sure I go through every single bit correctly. Right, for the back piece, you will need a piece of eight and a quarter by 11 and five eighths, so standard A4, okay. Then you need another piece of standard A4, so eight and a quarter by 11 and five eighths, okay. And then you will need one piece of six and a quarter by seven and three quarters. This is for the box here, which is number 25, Christmas Day. So it's to put a nice big piece of 
chocolate in. Then you need two pieces of three by um, the A4 size, so 11 and 5 eighths. And again, two pieces of three by eight and a quarter. Then this piece here is to go inside, so just inside here, and it just helps keep that all kind of flat, gives it a bit of support. And this is seven and one eighth of an inch by three on those ones and then for the boxes themselves so all these so you need 24 of four by four and five eighths of an inch okay and then for the little sentiment on the box I'm not actually happy with mine I've done this and now I, I think that's too small and I've got some more happy uh, Merry Christmas stamps coming um, so for this for this video I'm going to put it on there but I just I'm going to lightly put a little bit of um, double sided tape so I can peel it off and stick something over the top when it comes but this is five and a quarter by three quarters okay right first of all we will make the the base this piece here so what you're going to need for that is your two pieces of this one and this one so you need your two pieces of three by eleven and five eighths and two pieces of three by seven and one eighth okay so what we're going to do first of all is scoring along the three inch side you're going to score it a quarter of an inch okay all the way down and then one sorry i'm not in the thing there am i there we go right you're going to score at a quarter of an inch and then one and a quarter all the way down then one and three quarters all the way down and then two and three quarters all the way down so you want to do that on both pieces of that one and then you want to do the same so on this one here you want to score at is that the right piece I'm using oh no that's the that's the middle bit let me grab I thought it didn't look right this piece yeah that's the three by eight and a quarter so you should have two pieces of them so with that other piece again on the three inch side you want to score the same as that longer piece so at a quarter all the way down one and a quarter one and three quarters and two and three quarters then rotate it onto the eight and a quarter inch side and you want to score at half an inch and you want to go past that first quarter inch score line and then down to the second score line and then you want to score again at seven and three quarters again past that first score line and down to that second score line so you can just see there what I've done and do that again on the other piece so you should have two pieces like this scored now I've already prepared my other ones, so this is what we're going to now do with those in a minute. What I'll get you to do actually as well, while we've still got the scoreboard out, is that other piece, so that 7 and 1 8 by 3, you want to score exactly the same again. This is the piece that's going to support in the middle, and this is 1 quarter, 1 and a quarter, 1 and 3 quarters, and 2 and 3 quarters. Okay, same scoring there. Right, there is more scoring, but we'll just stick with that for the minute and we'll get this base done so uh, right there are the pieces that I've already done so that's the support bit you want the eight and a quarter and the eleven and five eighth pieces and you just want to burnish those score lines now I've already put tape along all of those little quarter inch sides so I've put red tape down here so if you just go ahead and do that. Okay, so with that shorter piece of all of them, so this piece of support, just leave that to one side for the minute. So you've got your two long ones, so you should have two, two. So those are just plain, the longest pieces, and they're gonna be the two sides. And then these two are gonna be your top and bottom. So where you scored, you scored all the way down the long way, and then you scored those two little half inch score lines what you want to do is cut up that score line so go past that first little quarter inch and then up to that next one and then you want to cut across from this one here down to that score line so you're just joining it up so again this end here so you just want to cut up like so and then just cut across like that Okay, so on your three by eight and one quarter inch pieces, they should be that shape. So there's one, and there's the other one. Okay, so you will have two like that, 
you will have two like this and you'll have that little support piece as well right put them all to one side what you want to do now is grab one of your big a4 pieces so this is going to be my back and I've already put two hole punches here and this is going to be for my ribbon so you want to do this now because once you start sticking everything on you will obviously not be able to do that and you want it to be nice and kind of hidden so just with a ruler again what you want to do is just mark at one inch down so just do a little marker on the end here was it one inch no sorry it wasn't one inch it was less because I'm looking it's three quarters of an inch so grab my pencil so just put a little marker there at three quarters of an inch put another little marker at this end at three quarters of an inch and then join those up okay and then you want to come in at two inches and just put a little pencil mark and again along that line come in at two inches and put another little pencil mark and then hole punch that just gives you a nice even center okay now you want your I'm just trying to think it's going to be that way isn't it yeah so this is going to be the back that's going to be exposed so i'm just going to thread this through and then it's entirely up to you what length you kind of want it but i think that's kind of nice like so and then what i'm going to do is just grab a little bit of red tape like so and another piece of that okay if you want to put lots of knots in you can because you've got that depth here so it'd be able to hold that okay but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put just going to stick them down and then cut the excess of the ribbon off this red tape so strong and the advent calendar isn't that heavy so this is fine and then just bring it across stick that down and just like i said cut off I need to sharpen them, they're not sharp at all. And then again, just stick that piece like so. Oh, they're terrible scissors now. I need to get them sharpened straight away. Right, so that's what you will have now. So you've got that ready to hang it up at the back. So now that's in place, grab back all of these pieces again. So those two top pieces and then your two side pieces. So First of all, we will start with one of the long ones. You just want to take off some of that tape. And you just want to run it. So the score line here of that quarter inch piece, you want to line that score line up with the edge of this here. And then line up the other end. Like so. And then you can just flatten that down. And when you bring it up, just check. And you should have a nice straight side like so. So that's one side. And do the other one. Okay, so now you should have two sides. And on the back there, nice and straight. And then we want to pop these two. So not the side that we've taken those kind of that notch, you know, the bit out. You want to do the longest piece. So just take your tape off there. And I'll go from the bottom first. So you want to make sure this last, this little corner here of that quarter inch is lined up with the score line on that red card. And then lined up with the back of the green. Because you're just overlapping that red card ever so slightly. Um, yeah, the red card slightly. Just make sure it's all stuck down. Okay. And then just make sure I'm doing this all in the right ear. It's all coming along nicely. And then again, the okay. second piece. So now we want to do the two longer pieces again because basically they're going to go down and then this one's going to come over the top like so, form a nice corner. And don't worry too much about bits that you're not going to see any of this because then we're going to put that green piece on over the top anyway, so don't worry. Um, right, so I'll just do this one here and basically what you want to do is line up. this piece this the edge of this piece here has got to line up with this piece here so as you bring it over if you start from one end and line that up so you want to get a nice rectangle end 
and then again I can just do that at this end so line up the rectangle and then you can just push the whole thing forward and it should lie completely flat if it feels like it's not going to press down flat then you know that that's not straight underneath okay and then you can just really apply lots of pressure there then when it comes up you see you've got a nice edge okay so do the same with this piece here right i'll start with the bottom one so again peel this piece off now this one you won't be able to push flat because obviously you've got this now in place so you just want to make sure you can see there that just line it up and kind of catch it onto the end. If I grab my uh, pokey tool so that I can kind of hold it. If I go from that angle then I can see. Yeah, so you just want to get it so it's just sitting next to that. Kind of push, keep your pokey tool there to hold it in place and then bring it down and it will all just stay like so. Oh and then what you can do is pull it forward. There you go. And the same, again the same thing. As long as it lies flat then you know you've got it nice and straight. And then just pop it up and it will slide in those corners. And we're going to pop some glue on the ends there to hold it all in place. Again, so just yeah. bring in those two side pieces like so. And once we've put some glue on those corners, you can see there it all comes together and you've got a really nice like uh, tray. So there you go. That's giving me a nice idea for a tray there as well. Put some handles on the side and I don't know, you can put some really nice little display things there. So there you go, you've got a tray as well. Two projects in one. Right, so we need some glue on the edges of these. So all you want to do is a little bit of wet glue. Grab one of these little things that I've got, which are really handy. Okay, just, okay. So just put a little bit of glue on the end. And then all you want to do is just put glue on the end there. And on this corner here, you don't need loads because it's just going to, once that's set, it just means it stops moving. Plus we've got that card to go on the top of it anyway, so it isn't going to go anywhere. But just bring it back over. And again, bring that one up. Just line them up so you get a nice right angle. And then just hold them in place. And again, the same with that other end, just a little bit of glue. Okay, so once that's done, then I'm just going to get my red tape and you want to run that down the tops. So this is half inch red tape, so I know it fits nicely. But as long as you hog the outside of the tray, then that's fine. So if your tape's slightly thinner, don't worry. Done. Okay, so that is now all prepped and ready for when we add the top piece and then this supporting piece that you've burnished it's basically going to sit in the middle like so but we're going to attach this top piece first to the um the piece with all the squares on so don't worry about that bit for now so just sit that to one side also um when i decorated all my little um squares here with the numbers on i used my tinsel red paper mania embossing powder so I've got other reds, but this one's a tinsel red, so it's got a real kind of, just a, a different kind of shine to it. It's lovely. So again, I'll share all the links to that. I just thought I'd mention that in case I forget. Okay, so this is probably a bit more of a time-consuming bit. So this is that other piece of um, A4, so the ele um, 8 and a quarter by 11 and 5 eighths. Now, flip it over. This is my back. Now, what you want to do is you want to draw, first of all, a one-inch line around all of the sides and basically that tells us that that is this area here of the frame of that or the tray and it just it's just a guide then for you to know that you don't want to cut any of your squares over that so just start at the top here and just do half an inch at the bottom here do half an inch and then join that up Okay, and then again on the corner, do half an inch, join that up, half an inch here, join it up, and then half an inch. Okay, so you've got a nice half inch border all the way around there. Next, um, because obviously it's 24, 
so I wanted to make, I was playing around with kind of how I was going to make, oh, ideally I wanted a Christmas tree, but the, the Christmas tree kind of shape, but the size and um, squares and stuff, it just wasn't going to work. But basically what I've done is, let me just look at the measurement here, yeah, so each of these squares is just under one and a half inches. So if you don't have a ruler that's got those, um, these extra, um, so if your ruler just shows your um, one uh, eighth, a quarter, three eighths and so on, it doesn't show you the breakdown again, you just want to mark just under your uh, one and a half. And then you just, so you want to do just under one and a half and then another one, just under one and a half, another one, just under one and a half, just under one and a half, just under one and a half. Do that again all along the bottom and then join those points up. Okay, so you'll then have one, two, three, four, five panels that are just under one and a half. Then flip it onto this side and you want to do one and a half exact one and a half, one and a half, one and a half, all the way down until you get to, so you would have done one, two, three, four, five, six, and then that last one will be just over. But don't worry, whatever it is, because that's going to be for this bigger um, slot for the box, the big box, the number 25 to go at the bottom. Then do that again, one and a half all down this side and then join them all up and then you will have all of those squares and basically all you then need to do is with your die cutting machine grab your smallest square, sit it in the middle of the square that you've drawn, put a little bit of washi tape down and run it through and run it through 24 times. Okay. Like I said, if yours is a little bit bigger, that will still be okay because you can see here you've got a border of about a quarter of an inch all the way around each square. So you can afford to go a bit bigger, but then like I said, you'll have to make your boxes bigger as well. Okay, so that's that one. And then the, for the bottom box, what you need to do here, because I didn't have a die that's this side, so I had to cut this using my little um, paper uh, knife here. So all I've done is basically you want to come in at three, so from the from the half inch border there you want to come in at three and five eighths of an inch. Okay so that's the middle. Okay and then you want to come in at seven eighths of an inch. Just anywhere kind of up a bit there. Just do a little marker, a little marker like so. And then basically draw yourself a square so, um, a rectangle, sorry. So the rectangle was one inch. Okay, so within this big pencil rectangle, you want to come in at seven eighths of an inch, come in at seven and an eighth of an inch there. You've got your middle point, and then just do a one inch deep rectangle in pencil. And then with your cutting mat, a metal ruler, and your cutting tool, and you want to very carefully score along and cut that bottom one out okay so like I said it's not hard it's not hard stuff to do but it is just this is the time consuming bits and pieces and I've done this all over um, different days um, in preparation for this I've done this um, a lot quite a while ago now so I'm finally getting a you know to put it together okay so that is then what you will have so now because this piece is done, this is my back, I don't need to worry about rubbing all of that pencil off because you're not going to see any of it. But with this piece here, it can sit in the middle because this is a half an inch um, uh, gap here. So you want to make sure if you are using slightly different sizes, you need to take okay, that into so account. Okay, so mine was actually slightly out there. So I put a little um, note at the beginning of the video when you come to cut this piece out. Um, basically what you want it to be now is so it's um, it be be two and yeah so it's two and seven eighths of an inch same length but it's just two and seven eighths of an inch so I'll put that little noter so then you want to score at a quarter of an inch one and a quarter 
then one and five eighths of an inch, and then two and five eighths of an inch. And then that'll give you your same little quarter inch side there. So I've just doctored this. I'm, you're not going to see this, so I'm not too bothered. So, um, but obviously I don't want it being exposed. So now I've got my top piece here is uh, three eighths of an inch, which will now fit within there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on this one. So I don't see. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm going to put tape on the top. Like so. Peel that off. And then you just want to stick that. Like so. So basically now when that goes in, it's just going to act as a support in the middle. Okay, so now grab your tray, undo all of oh, all of this tape here. Undo the tape here, and oh, it's all sticking to me. So it's all static on that other piece, the other side. You're going to stick one on top of the other. So this is you doing a little bit differently, just because. Like I said, you're not going to see this, it's just acting as a support. So I'm just sticking one piece on top of the other there to push it on. Just put your bone tool in there so you give it like some kind of ledge just so you can push it down. Okay, so that's stuck down. Again, don't have to be super, super careful because you're not going to see it. So then you want to make sure that this piece with the big number 25 box is at the bottom. And very carefully start at the top, line that up like so, and just work your way down the sides. Once you get to that piece where you've got that little frame to support it, just make sure that gets stuck down. You're not going to see any of this because all your boxes will be in, and just keep working your way. All the way down, like so. I've got a little bit of red tape coming over there, which I have to use my embossing buddy on. I've gone off a little bit, but hey ho, it's a nice little red border, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so that is that piece. Now that's the main bit all stuck down. So then, what you can do is start doing the boxes. So obviously, I've done mine. So mine then just. Like I said, it's a snug fit because they're the same size, so they will all go in like so. And with having that support there in the middle, it stops this kind of moving down. Right, so to make the boxes, and then we can fill the rest of it up. So you need that piece. You should have two pieces left. This small piece here, and then this piece, which is your bigger box. So, again, I'll just put that to one side. Grab your scoreboard. And we'll do the big box first. So this is six and a quarter. So scoring along the six and a quarter inch side at uh, uh, three eighths of an inch all the way down. Two and three eighths of an inch. And then pull the card out, okay, from the side there. And you want to score at three and three eighths of an inch and five and three eighths of an inch, okay? Then rotate okay, so pull it. the card out and you want to score at one inch, six and a half inches, and then push that card back in and score at seven and three eighths of an inch. Okay. And you should have this kind of tab running along on one side because that's going to be the um, kind of little lip that holds the box when you open and close it. So that's that piece. So that's just the one. And then this one you'll have 24 pieces of and this one you need to score let me sure we get this scoring right along the way. four and five eighths of an inch side you want to pull the card out slightly and score at one and one eighth of an inch push the card back in and score at two and one eighth of an inch pull the card back out again and score at three and a quarter and then push the card back in again and score at four and a quarter okay and then rotate it onto the 
And you want to just side. pull the card out slightly and score at half an inch. Push the card back in and score at one and a half. And then pull the card back out again and score at three. Okay, and it's, it's unusual scoring because it's got to fit snug inside those squares. Okay, so do that 24 times. <laughs> right, that is all that scoring done. Then we will do these little boxes. So um, just burnish all of those. So what I would say lines. here is do one first. Just score one, burnish it and put it together and check it fits in your squares. Don't do all 24 to then find out that you're slightly off with your scoring and you've just wasted not only your, your time but a load of card. So just do one first and just see how you go with it. Okay, so now you want to cut. So you should have this smaller tab at the top have that facing away from you so you've got the four big squares here, um, full squares sorry at the bottom. You just want to neatly cut up those squares like so and then that piece at the end you want to cut out okay then now you've got the tab facing you so again I'm just going to notch that slightly there and then cut all the way down so you've got that little tab there on the side, okay, yeah that's right, so you want the tab, just flip it over so you've got the tab on the left hand side, okay, rotate it, sorry, so no, the tab's on the right hand side, sorry, um, and you want to cut up the first score line, so you want to go past the first score line down to that second one there, and then cut down there, cut down there, just check doing this yeah, yeah yeah it's the right way okay so tabs on the um right hand side and then the squares with the little three quarter three eighth of an inch tabs at the top are facing away from you and you want to cut across that one you want to cut that one completely out and then cut across that one all right so that's what you should have. Then you just want to just notch off, because this is going to be, be the bit that sits inside, and then just go and notch the corners of these, and this one. Tidy up that a little bit there. Okay. All right, the bottom bits here, if you want to just cut off the score lines like I usually do, just so it's got a bit of a nicer finish on the bottom and it will help. You won't have any kind of bits hanging over the edge, so it'll help go in those squares a little bit easier. Okay, so that's what you should have. Tab on your right-hand side, four squares on the bottom, then one, half, one cut out completely, another half, and then one with the whole square and the little tab. Okay, so now you want to put a little bit of tape on this tab here. Like so, and then I'm going to use wet glue on the base, I think, there. I might use, I'm not sure. Okay, so let's put this together. Fold it in half and in half again, like so, and then that's going to go in, and then that will go down so it closes your little box. So, with that in mind, mine go in that way with that bit kind of facing down, so this will be the last one to stick down. So, stick the two sides and the back, and then I'm going to just get a bit of wet glue. If you want to stick them all down. And just put a little bit, I'll just blob a little bit on each one there. But the main one is just getting that one. And then this last one here, we'll just like so. Just turn that upside down, grab the ruler, and just push that all down. Like 
so. I'm just going to pop two little sweets in whilst I've got it here. Fold that all down and then close that up like so. Okay. And then with those numbers, so you want to cut 24 of these and decorate them. So I've heat embossed my numbers. I'm going to put a little piece of holly there and that sticks perfectly on top of that one there. So I'm going to use some of my red tape here to stick this in. Okay, down. so I've got the little tab bit that way. So I'm going to stick my number this way up. And just line it all up nicely. And there you have it. Then just test it. And then I'll grab my one and just pop it in one of these down here. And there you go. Fits in nice and snug. The more you bring these out, the card will naturally start to almost like roll and soften on the side. So it will just make it easier to to do it each time so like I said you need to do 24 of those and then it's just the box for the bottom here so I just need to burnish okay so what you want to do because I've already cut some of mine out so I know where I am so I've got that shorter little tab here on the left hand side so the bottom right and bottom left you want to cut up and just cut out that little piece and just then do that piece on a little angle and a notch little notch there because that's going to be again a little bit that kind of goes in um, flaps inside okay and then you want to cut down so you've got one square a rectangle a square you want to cut down like so and then cut that whole piece out and then cut along that one there cut down sorry I'm just because first time I've done this one since that white one and it's been a while so I'm just making sure if I do it all and then you can see I'll talk you through what you need to do okay yeah that's right so You've got that tab on the right hand side here you want to cut all of that section out so you then have these two squares and this rectangle with that little tab on the top okay so you'll cut that corner out which I showed you and cut all the way out and cut all off that other little three-eighths of an inch piece all of that piece there so literally you're going to have that so you've got um, what was it Yes, yeah, so it's just under an inch, then the bigger piece, which is two, and then just under an inch, and then two, and then the tab. And then at the bottom, you just want to cut up each of those, like so. And again, I'm just going to take a little bit off, just so it makes it a bit easier. Like so. Okay, so again, grab some red tape. I'm going to run it along that tab. Okay, so take that piece, fold it in half, and then fold that piece all the way down. Okay, and then again, you've got that. What you can do is take, kind of wedge those bits as well. Otherwise, you won't be able to close it all too well. And then this bottom piece then, so put in your two sides, and then I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on them, and then bring down, it doesn't really matter, and then stick that other one down, like so. And again, if you want to turn it upside down, open that end up and get your ruler, and just stick okay, it in and the grab your calendar and it will fit in nicely there at the bottom and then like I said I've got that sentiment which I'm not happy with so I'm going to use just a little bit of tape tear tape just in the middle though so I can peel it back off but just to give you an idea it will just sit with a little equal kind of edge little border like so 
I'm just going to put the rest of those squares in. Okay, there you go. There is my advent calendar. I may decide to add more on here. I am waiting for some more Christmassy bits and pieces to come, um, but I am really pleased with this. Um, also, what I might do is stick the bottom of these down inside, so all you do each time is just lift this piece, so it's actually, it actually stays in there. I think that's quite nice. If you imagine that's hanging, you open it like so and then you take out the chocolates. I think I prefer that actually. So that could be another thing that you do is when you um, take this out, put some, I might put some wet glue on or some red tape and then just literally push them in, push them down and push your finger against the back there. And I think I might prefer that. So I think that just look a bit nicer with the windows opening like so, but I am thoroughly chuffed with that. I hope it's inspired you to do something similar. Like I said, I'm going to maybe, I wouldn't mind getting some real, um, not real, but some um, uh, like little bits of fern um, or some Christmas tree itself and kind of have it kind of decorating around it. I don't know, but it's it's ready and I'm going to change that sentiment to a bigger one when, I, when they arrive. But there you go. So I hope you enjoyed this um, tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed the Christmas workshop. There will be another one in November. So I'm going to put all my Christmas stuff away now and have a break from it and just get back to normal tutorials, which will resume next week. Um, hit the like button, subscribe, comment, all those lovely things. And um, I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.